Welcome to the 2020 Standard Work Specifications Introduction video. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the 2020 version of the Standard Work Specifications, highlight the major changes and the thought process behind those changes, as well as provide a timeline for completion. We hope that you will find this informative and helpful as you continue to use the Standard Work Specifications into the next decade. We'll structure our discussion in the following manner. First, we'll discuss a little background information about the standard work specifications. Then we'll cover the reason for the update, the methodology used for that update, and the outcome of that. First, we'll provide a little background information about the standard work specifications, where they came from, and how to use them. The uh, standard work specifications were first introduced in 2012, and their goal was to provide a consistent definition of quality for installed measures in the home performance industry. The primary users of the SWS are typically associated with the Department of Energy Administered Weatherization Assistance Program. However, the standards were produced with the wider home performance industry in mind. To facilitate this, the committees that developed the standards were made up of representatives from the Weatherization Assistance Program, from the wider home performance industry, materials manufacturers, educators, and included individuals from both the private and public sectors. The SWS were most recently updated in 2017 and were due for an update in 2020 as part of the regular three-year update cycle. Let's briefly discuss the purpose of the standard work specifications. They were originally designed to define the minimum acceptable work quality standards for a home performance measure installation to be effective, durable, and safe. The SWS do not determine which measures or tasks are appropriate for a given home nor do they describe best practices for installing these measures or performing tasks. They also do not dictate building analysis practices, diagnostic or assessment requirements, or the outcomes of analysis. Let's now discuss briefly the anatomy of the SWS. When we say anatomy, we mean the basic terminology and layout of the standard work specifications. That way, as we continue our discussion, we'll all be speaking the same language. The standard work specifications are broken into sections, topics, subtopics, details within the subtopic, and then specifications. Each detail contains a desired outcome which is the ultimate goal of the detail. Then each specification contains an objective, which is the goal of the specific specification. So this specification is contained in the air sealing section, the general pressure boundary topic, under the general air sealing subtopic, and the detail title is air sealing holes. Each detail is broken into a number of specifications, represented by the letter following the detail number. In this case, we are looking at the specification for sealant selection under the detail of air sealing holes. There are additional specifications in this detail, contained in letters B through F. Each one of the specifications within the detail will apply to the installation of the measure of air sealing holes. This means that when an installer selects the detail, air sealing holes, all the specifications within the detail will apply to that installation. Ultimately, the desired outcome of prevent air movement through holes at 50 pascals of pressure is the goal of the installation. Now that we're all speaking the same language, let's discuss why a major update was decided on for the 2020 update. 
There were two primary reasons for the substantial update in the 2020 version of the standard work specifications. The first reason was based upon user feedback. Many users felt that the existing SWS were redundant, contained conflicting details, were overly complicated, unnecessarily large, and were cumbersome to use in the field. DOE took this user feedback into account in the process of streamlining the standard work specifications for 2020. The second primary reason had to do with weatherization assistance program variance requests. DOE observed that the majority of the variance requests received were primarily due to the SWS doing what it wasn't supposed to be doing, directing building analysis, describing work practices, and dictating measure selection. Some additional benefits of this update were to provide a consistent framework for future additions to the SWS to ensure that they align with the original intent, existing standards, and format. Effort was also taken to reduce confusion due to conflicting language between housing types. The standards were reorganized for ease of access, and the overall volume of specifications has been reduced significantly without losing any of the relevant information. We will now discuss the methodology that DOE used for this update. First, let's discuss the schedule. Over the last year, DOE has created an updated and proposed change to the 2020 standard work specifications. This was completed in March of 2020. During that same time, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory created a new web interface that will allow the SWS to be much more user-friendly. Starting in May of 2020 and continuing through June, the SWS committees will review the updated materials and provide feedback and comment to the Department of Energy. In July, the Department of Energy will finalize the reviewed content, incorporating any concerns or suggested changes of the standard work specification committees. Once this is accomplished, NREL will include the finalized content in the updated SWS site, which is scheduled to go live in September of 2020. The substantial changes at the detail and specification levels followed a very simple process. If the answer to any of these questions is no, revisions are required. So at the detail level, does the language define the minimum acceptable outcomes for a weatherization or home performance installation to be effective, durable, and safe? If the measure, based on the detail name, were called for on a work scope, is it reasonable to expect every specification would apply? If the answer to either one of these is no, then unnecessary specifications should be removed or a new separate detail will be generated. At the specification level, does the specification describe one distinct step that would be required to accomplish the desired outcome of the detail? Is the objective relevant to the specification? and unique within the detail? Is the specification relevant to the title and unique within the detail? Can this specification be inspected after the work is completed? This methodology resulted in some major changes to the SWS. First, specifications that dictate building analysis practices or measure selection were removed. Remember, the standard work specifications are work quality standards, not energy audit standards, and they do not dictate building analysis practices or the measures to be installed. Another major change was the removal of any specification or detail that dictates worker safety standards. While worker safety is important, Worker safety is already regulated by federal OSHA and the specific state where the work is being performed. 
DOE found that creating duplicative or conflicting worker safety regulations is not in the interest of the industry. Another substantial change was the removal of most occupant education specifications. It's not that DOE feels these are unimportant, but they are process related. They are not installations. Often, these are impossible to site verify the final inspection. Only specifications that have associated documentation, such as user manuals, remain. Additionally, DOE has chosen to remove most references to the authority having jurisdiction. Technically speaking, the authority having jurisdiction can always supersede the SWS if it is stricter. However, when the authority having jurisdiction and the SWS conflict, the stricter of the two must be followed by the Weatherization Assistance Program unless a variance request is submitted and approved by DOE. For example, you may run a program where the authority having jurisdiction only requires R6 insulation on ducts. However, the SWS calls for R8. R8 is to be installed if cost effective for any DOE funded project, as the SWS is stricter in this regard. DOE has also chosen to remove specifications that simply referenced outside standards but provided no actual installation details. It found that most complex system installations have code required inspections and design protocols already in place. Duplicating those was not necessary. This was especially true in multifamily projects where DOE found reference standards to be beneficial. They then just incorporated the language from that standard into the standard work specifications. The determination was made that this was simpler than requiring the purchase of these standards by someone in the network to be able to actually understand what the standard work specification was calling for. This should reduce the amount of redundancy and difficulty in using the standards. Additional refinements include renaming the single-family housing type to single-family site built. DOE felt this better described the housing stock which this standard was dealing with. DOE also renumbered the entire SWS to remove gaps and align similar details within more appropriate subtopics and topics. All content was rewritten in active voice and plain language. This was done so as to provide clear instructions that were understandable to all portions of the home performance industry. DOE also made efforts to align the terminology and content across housing types and sections where practical. Any overlapping details, whether within the same housing type or not, were combined into a single version that applies to all pertinent housing types. DOE also added details for some common installations that previously did not exist in the 2017 version. Some examples are gutters, water heater tank insulation, and clean and tune of heating and cooling systems. Let's briefly discuss some examples of specification changes. The first example we'll consider is the removal of global worker safety specifications from the health and safety section. After consideration, DOE determined that these are not installations. Therefore, it is impossible to inspect for compliance at the final inspection. Additionally, OSHA, the EPA, as well as state and local ordinances cover all worker safety items. There were also concerns expressed by users over conflicts that were contained in the SWS with federal OSHA regulation. All global worker safety specifications have been removed from the entirety of the SWS to allow the federally mandated regulations to take precedence. The next category of changes are incorporated specifications. 
This refers to details or specifications that remain in the same section after the update, but that were found to contain either conflicting language between housing types or to have many duplicative details or specifications. These duplications were combined into single details that address multiple housing types. This is where the greatest reduction in volume was accomplished in this update. A prime example of this is found in the air sealing section and the duct sealing details. There were numerous details that contained specifications that were nearly identical. These were combined into single details that stretched across multiple housing types that align the content and language of each section appropriately. The next category are specifications or details that were moved to another section. When DOE determined that they would better align in a different section, then those details or specifications were moved into the new section and incorporated into the pertinent detail or specification in the new location. An example of this is duct sealing. Duct sealing was previously in the air sealing section, but in this new update has been moved to the heating and cooling section and significantly condensed. For instance, just within the duct sealing section, this reduced the number of specifications from 87 to only 19 without losing any of the relevant information. The outcome of all of these changes are significant. First and foremost, the SWS have been reduced from a total of 3,035 specifications in the 2017 version to only 1,531 specifications in the 2020 update. This is a 50% reduction in volume without losing any relevant information. DOE additionally created a framework for future additions to the SWS. It has also resulted in a redesigned and much more user-friendly SWS site with improved functionality and commenting. With this new update, it will allow DOE to move into a five-year update cycle going forward. We hope that you have found this update to be useful and informative as you move forward into the next decade with the standard work specifications.